Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to show you the latest method I use to make my own holographic Pokemon cards. I like to make custom cards for special occasions or for building a deck for proxy play. I have another video on making simpler cards for proxy play here if you're interested. The first step in printing your own cards is to get images. If you're looking to make custom cards, there are a number of apps for your smartphone. I use one called PokeArt on iOS, but there are ones available on Android as well. There's also websites that let you create your own cards. If you're not great with Photoshop, using an app or website will make card creation super simple. If you want to print specific cards for a deck so you can play using proxies, you can just download images of your specific cards from the internet. Just Google the cards you want to print or go to pkmncards.com. It has images of pretty much every single set that was released. Once you have your images, you can print them on paper. I'm using a laser printer, but inkjets work well too. The quality of your prints will depend greatly on your printer. I'm using a Brother MFC 9130CW. It's a multifunction color laser printer. The quality of the paper will also determine how good your cards look. Regular copy paper works in a pinch, but definitely get some sort of glossy or photo paper specific to your printer. I'm using a color laser, so my paper is designed for that. If you have an inkjet, get the appropriate paper for that. So this is the type of paper I'm using. It's from Hammer Mill, and it has a glossy coat on it. For layout and sizing, I use a free open source program called Inkscape. I have an Inkscape template that will print eight on a standard sheet of paper. Just drag and align them with the outlines on the template, and they'll print out the correct size. I'll leave a link to the SVG template in the description. Just open it in Inkscape and lay out your cards with it. Now on to the backs. When I make my cards, I will usually print the backs directly on the other side of the paper. Depending on your printer, it might be hard to line up the front images with the back images. So what I usually do is make the borders larger and add some filler. This way, if it's off by a few millimeters, it's not as noticeable. Another option is to stick the fronts to a real Pokemon energy card if you want a more realistic, authentic look. For my purposes though, printing them directly on the back works fine. To give the cards the shiny hollow look, you can buy sheets of these transparent stickers that are holographic. Some just add the holographic effect while others will add stars or the broken glass look. All you have to do is apply the sticker sheet over your printed paper and carefully smooth it out. I typically use a ruler to help spread it on the paper and I don't have any issues with bubbles. After doing it a few times, I'm pretty good at it now. Next, we cut the cards out. You can use scissors, a razor, or a paper cutter. Just be careful with sharp objects. I prefer a paper cutter since it's very accurate. Pokemon cards have rounded corners, so I have this corner rounder to make this step easier. All you have to do is put it in the rounder and punch out the corners. After it's cut, you can put them in penny sleeves, top loaders, one touches, or deck sleeves if you plan to play um, with them as proxies. I would usually put them in one touches or screw downs. You can also put them in cases similar to what grading companies use. Check out this video if you wanted to make them look like they were graded.
Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. This is the method I use to make all my proxy or custom cards. You can make your own cards whichever way you want with your own custom backs or different hollow effects. It's all up to you. Hopefully it gives you some ideas on your next project. Have a nice day and see you next time.